Guys, tickets going fast. One show only Thursday night, May 4th in East Providence at the Comedy Connection, one of my favorite clubs. Place used to be a bank. The, the green room is the old vault. I love this place. Then on May 5th and 6th, playing out in Chicopee, Mass, at a place called the Comedy Loft. Very small, intimate room. Like I said, tickets are shooting out already. 150 people uh, each show. Uh, and then a couple of weeks later, Stress Factory out in New Jersey, New Brunswick, New Jersey. Stress Factory, like May 17, 18, 19, 20. Looking forward to playing some comedy clubs, doing some new material, getting a little intimate with the crowd. So go to pcorielli.com. More comedy club dates coming before we hit it up with a big tour in the fall, baby. Back to the cast. This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. All right, Pete and Sebastian Yo, we are back, baby. Uh, I, I don't do that too often anymore. Uh, what's going on, dude? <laughs> what? I'm uh, I'm doing the Jennifer Hudson show today, later on in the day. Eh? Oh, yeah? Awesome. Yeah. Nice. Not really. I'll tell you why. All right. I'm on the fast, right? Eh? Yeah. No, we do two shows back to back in the same day. I just went downstairs and uh, I looked at the flight of stairs to come up here, and I uh, I told myself I don't know if I can make it up the stairs. Uh, oh my god! Yeah, I'm starving. <laughs> yeah, sure. Now, Lana is on the same fast. I don't know why Lana is still happy. Like, I don't know why she's not feeling the same effects that I'm feeling from this fast. All right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know, just because I've been eating a lot more than her. Anyway, right now. Wasn't well, it like, a, it's, uh, I think it's a mental approach too, bro. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, it's like you got to, she's embracing the whole thing. She's, it's a celebration of her body cleansing itself and taking me to another level. You're walking around like I want a cookie. Yeah, you got, you got, uh, you got to, you know. The the problem, I, the problem I did had was, I watched Stanley Tucci last night, uh, his, right. his Italy show. Right. I like it, and, and yeah, sometimes he's a little, a little full of himself, but I do like it. I, I sort of hope him. <laughs> this is a, little, this is a couple times he's got to remind you he's an actor. He's like, okay, okay. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know. <laughs> it, it was. It was very, very good. You, you I mean, the food. You don't. Were you don't what? Yeah. You, you don't. What? You don't got to overpromote it. If if you if you thought if you thought it wasn't as good as your. No, it really was good. I really enjoyed it. I mean, the foods were like insane. The things this guy was eating were like just, just um, you know, and he was very informative. You know, everything. So I was watching but, it last uh, night. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you hang out with an actor long enough, they're gonna remind you they're an actor. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you pass the potatoes. By the way, I'm in movies. Anyway, I gotta <laughs> say, I love what you did with the kitchen. <laughs> uh, but but that's watching... not a good thing to be watching, bro. If you're trying to fast. I know, I was looking at it because they're, they're going to go into Italy and I wanted to see, you know, what what he was visiting. And the problem with watching a cooking show when you're on a on a fast is this guy made an anchovy pasta on that damn thing and I'm sitting there going, "Oh god, I could go for that right now." Right? Everything that everything that they were cooking, I'm I, I'm I'm thinking, "Man, I should try that. I should, you know, you try making it too." I I was going to Yeah. You ever get so inspired of watching a cooking show, you want to almost put it on pause, get the ingredients out, and start flaming it up? That's what I wanted to do last yeah. night. But yeah. Oh, um, man. Right now, I have such a headache moving into this cast. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plow through it because, like you said, I think right. it's a mental thing. I'm going to overcome this. And right. I want to talk about what... We went out to dinner 
with two other couples last week. All right. The the reservation was for seven thirty. Lana and I arrived at seven twenty five. We were then seated at the table and we began to wait for the couples. One couple texted us, they said they got uh they're in a DUI checkpoint. They're running late. Right? They got there 15, 20 minutes late. The other couple, no call, no text, came at 8.15, 45 minutes past the start time. My question to you is, uh, is it okay if the, the party is running that late to start ordering food? What's your take? Uh, <clears throat> yeah. You gotta. I mean, it depends why they're late. You know what I'm saying? If, like, there was something that the whole city's been affected by, like a massive downpour and streets are flooded, all right, we'll get another drink. If it's just, oh, sorry, you know, Bobby got home late from his softball game. I told him to leave after the fifth day. Get the fucking waiter. I'm getting chicken. Yeah. You, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, so, so, depends. So there was no catastrophe, and I took it upon myself to start ordering appetizers for the table because at oh, 45 minutes in, I was, star I was starving. Of, right? of course, bro. Yeah, No, appetizers, that go without saying. I'll, you could be 10 minutes late, and I'll be ordering an appetizer. <laughs> but, you can have one, but you can have one when you get here if there's any left. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but when you start going entrees, that's when you say, eh, you're late. We're done yeah, with you. Yeah, yeah. So we ordered some entrees, and I presented. Like, I'm sorry, I gotta say again, I've been late, and I've come in. And if my people in wit got entrees, I'm like entrees. It's a slap in my face. How could you enjoy your main dish without me here? That's you know, that's what you're saying when you go ahead and you order the main dish. Yeah, but at 45 minutes in, that's at a point where you look at your wife or you're lucky at your husband and you just cancel i mean right. if you're 45 minutes well, late you have to seriously look at jackie and go just tell him we ain't coming no yeah I, I, it depends again why you're late i mean but yeah basically you're getting there for some dessert and uh a cappuccino really it sounds like yeah, so... It depends, too. You know there's other people there, so you're like, well, they're not alone. They're all just hanging out with each other, so... Yeah, I mean, it didn't bother me that much, but I was just wondering what the etiquette was on, on ordering appetizers if the party wasn't there. <laughs> Groceries, school shopping, and getting a little something for yourself. You know you're already doing it, so why not get cash back for it with Ibotta? You can earn cash back on every shopping trip. Ibotta gives you cash back on hundreds of grocery items from produce to personal care to pantry goods. Either link your loyalty account or upload your receipt after you shop and you get cash back. It's that easy, people. The average Ibotta user earns $120 a year in real cash back. That could cover the cost of of an entire shopping trip. Or you could use your cash back to buy that flight you've been eyeing. I don't know what flight cost $120, but you could use it towards a flight. That game you're dying to go to or the fancy dinner you've been craving. A typical basket of groceries was over $50 more expensive at the end of 2022. I mean, I know, I go grocery shopping a lot. You're looking at the groceries, uh, the milk, the eggs, the bread. I don't know. I used to go to the grocery store, $100 used to buy you a full week. Now, $100, pack of gum and orange juice. Wouldn't you like some cash back with this? Come on. You could earn two and a half times that in the cash back for Ibotta. Or even more, depending on how much you Use Ibotta. Ibotta. You know what? Side note, Ibotta, the name came from the streets of Arlington Heights growing up. That's all we used to say. I bought a beef sandwich. Ibotta gives you real cash back, not points. Other apps give you points that don't amount to much. With Ibotta, 
you get real cash back that you can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards. You could earn cash back on a hundred of online brands and retailers too when you start with Ibotta, including Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners five dollars just for trying Ibotta by using the code the cast when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app and use the code the cast. That's I B O T. T A in the Google Play or App Store and use the code the cast. <laughs> now earlier in that day, I uh, I met a guy uh, at the gymnastics where uh, Serafina goes to gymnastics, and Lana has known him a little bit before I did, you know, because she goes uh, more than I do. And then I came out, started talking to him. Lana asked him a question, how many brothers and sisters do you have? And he said, well, I have uh, two brothers and two sisters, but one of my brothers has passed away. And we've talked about this on the cast before. Do you say, I'm sorry to hear that, just based on that information alone. Now, this guy's about 48 years old. Do you say, I'm sorry to hear that? It's fine too, but I think I'd probably go with uh, oh man, a long time ago, and and you know he's like yeah, we were younger, and then I, and then my second thing is I'm sorry to hear that, you know, okay. <clears throat> because if he says like, if he says well last year I'd be like oh then it's much more than it's like oh man I'm really sorry to hear that I hope you're doing okay then you get a, I hope you're doing okay on top of the I'm sorry to hear that but that has to be within like two years of the death. Okay. What if he said, uh, yeah, we lost him at birth? Well, it's almost, uh, why are you, uh, you bringing that up? Yeah, it is. It's, <laughs> what do you mean, birth? Like, I, I'm, I'm not, I mean, it's very tragic, no. but it's like, it's not like, you know, you, you, you didn't have, you, you didn't even have a catch with him, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but, so, you, so, you, so, I'm just saying. No, no, no. It's tragic, but doesn't need to be brought up, I feel. But if it is brought up and you go, let's say he goes, yeah, I lost my brother. And you go, I'm sorry to hear that. And he then goes, yeah, at birth. We, you know. Do you go? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, for, for a parent to say they lost a child at birth, absolutely tragic. But for the brother, it's like, what were you doing? You were probably a grandma's uh, playing with a Tonka toy. You know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> so at birth, it's not worthy of, I'm sorry to hear that, if it's a brother. I would think, right? I mean, you, okay. what do you think? That's a, that's what seems Girl, like. Uh, I didn't eat, Lana and I. And by the way, I just made the at birth up. It's, it, it has nothing to do with the story. Right. I was just giving it yeah. a, a That's scenario. That's why I'm being crass. It's not a real scenario. Yeah, I it's not it. a real scenario. So, Lana and I didn't say anything after he said he <clears throat> lost his brother. Right? No, nothing. No, sorry. No, nothing. We just, we so just this said. Is such a, this is like a Seinfeld in the booth episode. Nothing? Not even a, oh, oh, nothing. Just. I, Lana just went right into you enjoying your chicken. No, I mean. <laughs> now, was so, that, do you feel like, do you feel like Lana was going to hit him with the I'm sorry and you didn't have to and maybe she thought you were going to hit him with the I'm sorry so then nobody hit him with an I'm sorry? You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm very, I gotta, I gotta like revamp my whole I'm sorry to hear that because <laughs> that's not my go-to when I hear that because you know what I'm thinking is if I go, I'm sorry to hear that, <laughs> there's going to be more talk about, right. you know, yeah, we lost them to da da da, and, you know, and then we're going to go down the death road, right? Which is right. fine, but I'm like, right. at the time, a lot of times, I'm like, uh, do I really want to go down the road? So I leave, right. I leave the sorry to hear that, and sometimes I give a, you know, like a, it's an audible kind of grunt or sound that well, would... look, look, can I try it? let me see like if I go 
Uh, I got two brothers and two sisters, but one of my brothers passed away years ago. <sighs> oh, God, you almost seem annoyed that I told you that. <laughs> I got to work on that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. The grunt, the grunt thing covered it, bro. <laughs> okay, <Yeah>. okay. <laughs> Whether you want to get more fit, be a better parent, or get more done at work, there's one thing that will help, and that's better sleep. I know personally I've been getting about seven to eight hours on these miracle-made sheets. I wake up now, head is clear, got a lot more energy. And I got to tell you something. To be honest with you, I don't think it's the sheets. I think it's because I quit drinking, but I think the sheets are helping. You could tap into the power of self-cooling temperature regulation, which has been shown to improve sleep quality by up to 34%. Now, me, I used to wake up in a ton of sweat. I don't know if I was passing away, if I had a stroke at night. I put these sheets on my bed. I got to tell you, it regulates my body temperature in a way where I get up ready to start the day. Now, using the silver-infused fabrics originally developed by NASA. Now, anything that NASA is using, I'm using. I'm sorry. If it's good for space, it's good for my bed. Miracle-made sheets are thermoregulating and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long so you get better sleep every night. Miracle sheets are luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands. Go to trymiracle.com slash the cast to try it today. And we got a special deal for you people. Save over 40% and be sure to use the promo code the cast at checkout to save even more. And listen to this people. Not one, not two, three free towels. And Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash the cast and use the code the cast to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash the cast to treat yourself. Thank you, Miracle Made. For sponsoring this episode. <laughs> now, Lana starts talking. And he goes, oh, how many, you know, how many people you got in your family? And she's like, I have a, I have stepbrothers and sisters, but I lost my stepbrother. He then hits her with, I'm sorry to hear that, Right? So then I go to the guy, I go, let me ask you something. You said you lost a brother, and we didn't say nothing, right? Now you hear my wife say she lost a stepbrother, and you hit her with, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> Did you put a little more English on that? <laughs> Because we didn't, way would, because yeah. we didn't say it to you, <laughs> and I said, "Did you even clock that we didn't say it to you?" That's great, dude. That's great. <laughs> so then he goes, "That's better than an I'm sorry to take this whole thing to this level with him." You know, <laughs> this is beyond the I'm sorry. Like, wow, now we're really getting into it. <laughs> what did he say? I just wanted did to he clock it. I want, I wanted to go under the hood with it. Right? He said. <laughs> I, That's I, great. I, I, he goes, I always say that. I always say, I'm sorry to hear that when someone tells me someone in their family passed away. I go, let me give you this. I go, I go, first of all, uh, I should have said it. It's my bad. I didn't say it. I'm owning that. And I go, secondly, how long ago did he pass away? He said six years, okay? So I said, let me give you this scenario. Right? If you were talking to my mother, and my mother's 77 years old, and she said, yeah, you know, when my father passed away, do you still hit her? What an I'm sorry, because obviously her father at 77 is no longer living, right? 
Right. Do you hit my mother with an I'm sorry to hear that if the person who died has lived a full life already, like died when they were 85, right? Even if they died when they're 18, bottom line is they would be dead by now even if they lived a full life. Yeah. 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 So do, do you still hit them with an I'm sorry to hear that if the person who passed away was just inevitably going to pass away because they were just right, old. Right. right. I'm, I'm asking. It's a great what, question. What, oh, oh, I thought you asked him. That's that's a freaking great question. And and more sadly is when do we get, because you don't, you don't. I wouldn't, first of all. If if, if a 70-year-old man said, when my uh, before my father passed away, I, great, it's like history. Probably hung out with fucking Abe Lincoln. But, but with us... What about when you get to the age, like when I'm at the age, I'll just use me as an example, and I'll tell somebody, oh, my father, when my father passed away, and they don't hit me with it, I'm sorry. That's when I know I'm old, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? <clears throat> They're not even hitting me with it, I'm sorry for the death of my parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but I think, before I lose this thought, because you didn't tell us, first of all, did the guy clock it, by the way, when you didn't say, I'm sorry? Did he say he noticed it? He said he didn't notice it. He didn't notice it. That's interesting, because I feel like when you're bringing it up that someone passed, you're in the, you're expecting, and I'm sorry, otherwise you wouldn't have put it out there. But I bet he does it out of, out of respect for his brother. Well, that's another, that's another scenario. When people... Uh, say they have lost a loved one in the in the conversation. I mean, he could have very well said, "I have two brothers and, and two and two sisters," and left it at that. But he took it another yeah. level and said, "I have two brothers and two sisters. One of my brothers passed away." Does that indicate to the listener that he wants to talk about his dead brother? I, I, I f- that's how I take it. I feel like, you know, it's like. When, like when do we get to the age? Because I was fishing, you know, some you know, some of the guys, you know, bro, so and so passed away, and it's like, listen, we're at the age now, people we know are dying, so we don't need to bring it up when we're hanging out. Let's just focus. Like we're at the age now, let's focus on the alives. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, man? <laughs> and, you know, it just brings you down a little bit. Remind you, you know, so anyway, but yeah, maybe he doesn't. Maybe he just does that out of respect for his brother. That's a great dissecting question. Though, dude. I got so, another one, though. I got another I, one. I, I oh, don't go like ahead. to have to say it. I, I don't like to have to say it. I feel like I got to say it. I'm like, I even, like, in my head, I'm like, oh, man, I'm sorry to hear that, you know? And it's just so, it's like saying God bless you when someone sneezes. That's literally <laughs> all it is. You know what I mean? Sorry to hear that. Oh, thanks. <laughs> right, <laughs> it's, it's, it's ridiculous. I'm not even sorry to hear it. I I have no change of emotion here, hearing that you lost somebody. <laughs> Nothing. <Right. laughs> the only change of emotion I have a little bit is the annoyance that you just brought this whole fucking moment down a little bit. Well, you, I swear to God, it's yeah. I don't I don't bring up my dad sometimes to people to the point where we talking about my dad to the point where they go. Yo, oh, have you seen him in a while? And I'm like, oh, shit, you know. And then I got to tell them. And yeah, then yeah, they're yeah. like looking at me like, why didn't you tell me? Because I don't want to do any of this with you, guy. You're not in my inner circle. You don't <laughs> mourn with me, guy. And I don't <laughs> mourn with you. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I fucking mourn with you. Over here. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so you, in your own personal life, voluntarily don't bring up the fact that your father has passed away uh, at all. And is that a conscious decision? Like, um, do, do you oh, just go, I ain't, as soon as you meet people or as soon as you're around yeah. people, subconsciously yeah. do you tell yourself, they ain't, they ain't getting my father right. passed away tonight. They ain't getting that. Oh, no one gets that. That's, yeah, that's. I keep that to myself anyway, unless I'm around close friends, you know, or somebody that I'm having a nice conversation with and it, you know, happens to come up. But otherwise, you know, 
you know, you'll hear some people, comics, share, oh, you know, and they share everything. My mother's here, me back, and we're doing the fucking thing. I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I know you for two hours, and then our relationship is done. We don't have to yeah. get into all that. So, yeah. Okay. I'm and it's just it like step. I said. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. It's just a downer. What were you going to say? Like, to when people bring up that kind of stuff that to people they don't know. So, if people do tell you, my brother passed away. Is it appropriate? Let's say if you do say, I'm sorry to hear that. Is it appropriate to go, what'd he die of? To get the reason. It's another level here now. Right. Is it inappropriate to go, oh, he died six years ago. What'd he pass away of? And now this guy's going to tell you, you know, his, his, his ex-wife stuck a knife in his chest or whatever the hell it's gonna be right are you ready to hear the reason now I, I was talking to this group that i went out to dinner about this and i was with a doctor one of the guys is a doctor he goes i always ask what the person died of because i'm a doctor and i want to know now he's doing research well, he's like in the field. He's in the medical field, and then maybe he's hearing of a lot of deaths due to you know what a hypertension, whatever, you know, cardiovascular disease. Maybe he's trying to, you know, sum it up in his head. <clears throat> but since he's a doctor, does he have a pass that he could act ask that? Like for example, if you did have to bring up that your father passed away, right? And then mm-hmm. someone goes, "Oh, what he what he passed from." Do you, as the as the giver of the information, go? The fuck are you asking for? <laughs> no, I bring it up in the passing. I always say, "Why?" Oh my! Oh, blah, you blah, you blah. attach yeah. it. Oh, okay. It's yeah. another. Yeah, I Out like total that. respect. This. No, yeah. you know what? You're you're onto something because I think the person, if you're going to bring it up, my brother passed away of diabetes or whatever the hell it mm-hmm. is. Right. That eliminates all like oh okay and and then you know and then the 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 listener could go oh okay diabetes and right. then you could go I got diabetes or whatever the hell it is I like now, I like I that got a, I got a question for you let's say you do that and they go my brother died of diabetes right or let's say they say something like we said the first time my brother got divorced and his ex wife uh, she was drunk and she came over and she stabbed him he had a heart attack with a blade in her. Do you feel you have more of a right to inquire further about the stabbing than you would about the diet? Like, if it was a diabetes, you're not going to go, oh, what, a lot of cookies at night and ice cream? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, with the, but with the stabbing, can you go, hey, what the fuck? I tell, walk me through this, <laughs> right? Are you allowed to? Or, or you have to be as private as the diabetes? No. If he opens it up, whether it's a murder a car accident, something catastrophic, I believe uh, now. Oh, man, right. this is, we're getting into this. <laughs> so, you, so you're saying if it's something that, a death that would possibly be in the news, <laughs> then, I, then, then I have a right to ask you further about it, right? Yeah, a, a, a untimely death due to, you know, a, 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 you know, a catastrophe, you know, I don't know, like, uh, yeah, I, I lost my brother uh, in a well, hurricane. How about this? Fuck, how did that happen? You know, like, let's get into that. Was All he right. in the house? Couldn't he get out? Was he on the roof and fell into the water? Mm. I want to know. Well, I, I don't like know. to read. read you know, yeah. what, 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 what if he's like, I, I don't like to bring it up and stuff? I mean, again, you can't tell me your brother died in a hurricane and then do a walk away. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? You know what I mean? <laughs> Where do you stand on at home accident? Like fell off the ladder and died, or you know, wife backed up and uh, didn't see me working under the car and ran me over. Is that allowed to be like? What? Oh yeah, no. If you're like, I agree with you. What you just said. If you're gonna bring it up and be that detailed about it, you got to be ready for an interrogation about how that shit went down. I'm sorry. You can't. You can't go. Oh, I don't like to talk about it. What do you like to talk about? It? You just told me that your brother got ran over by a tractor. And now you don't want to right. talk about it. Right, right. So, yeah. <laughs> it, it, was, 
I told you about whole... it. What do you want? Details? Yeah, he got ran over. His fucking tire went right over his stomach. Yeah, no, but I was like, was he driving the tractor and then uh-huh. it got stuck? It's similar right. to what Renner, uh, Jeremy Renner, went through. When uh, when I heard that story uh, about the snowplow, I wanted to know how the hell do you get run over by a snowplow? Did a snowplow right. run him over? What happened? Turns out he was driving the snowplow. Got off. So I just right. sometimes yeah, it yeah. makes for an interesting story. About some, about you know how someone passed away. That, that's that, right. that's all I'm saying. But what I got to work on for I, me yeah. is throwing the "I'm sorry to hear that." Now I'm gonna not, I'm gonna put another wrinkle into the story. While I was at the restaurant, the bus boy, I work with him at the Four Seasons for seven years. He worked in the Gardens restaurant. I worked in the Windows Lounge. So we were in two different departments, but I knew him because we worked brunches together on Sundays, what have you. Nice guy, Victor. So he's telling me, you know, we're, we're reminiscing about working. Hey, have you seen this person? This person that one? And he goes, did you hear about so-and-so? I said, no. I'm... He got murdered. Right? Now, this is a guy that worked with him. I knew him, but he knew him more because they were kind of like yeah. work friends and outside of work they went out. I knew him because yeah, sometimes yeah. he would come out with the with the staff at, at like, uh, you know, we'd go get a drink after work and he would be there. But I didn't have his phone number or nothing, what have you. Right, right. So he says he got murdered. Right? Now, I I throw out, I'm sorry to hear that. This is just after the conversation I was having. With. Sorry to hear that. No, I don't. I, I don't. I don't throw an "I'm sorry to hear that" on a murder. I don't throw an "I'm sorry to hear that" on a murder. On a murder, you don't say "I'm sorry to hear that." No, that goes right to what the fuck? What? <laughs> There's no "I'm sorry to hear." I'm sorry to hear that's you know heart attack, you know disease, you know said something sad like an accident. I murders like that. It's seriously you know what? <laughs> sorry to hear. Yeah. He passed away. This is what it was. It wasn't that. He passed away. Uh, he hit you with a first, All right. f- f- first of all, the passing away, you pass away when you're 90. <laughs> Man? In your sleep. 90 <laughs> in your sleep. Like, a, oh, what a smile. Bro, I have... That's, Beautiful, bro. You got it. That's so funny. That's so true. You, That's what you, I think of passing away. Yeah. Pleasant. I got you. You can't tell me your sister died. You, you, know, you can't say my sister passed away when she was thirty-two years old. <laughs> I, 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 I feel pass away is reserved for someone at the end of their life. I think you say my sister died at right. thirty-two. No. Horrible, yeah. I mean, let it be what it is. It's horrible. Let it sink yeah, in. Horrible. My sister died. My sister yeah, died at 32 and, years old. It's awful. Yeah. Passed away right. to me is like napping under a tree on a sunny day. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, pass away. Pass away to me is like, is serene. Right. You passed away. <laughs> it's almost a term I'd use for a nap. Pass away till four and then get up to happy hour. <laughs> <laughs> right? I think you gotta start using the word "die" a little bit more <laughs> frequently in these <laughs> stories of, of people. So he goes, he passed away. I said, I'm sorry to hear that. He said, Yeah, his brother murdered him. Right now, his brother. <laughs> That's a fucking passing away. <laughs> I'm sorry, you don't pass away when your brother murders you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! Wow, Did you get deets on that one or what, bro? It was a family squabble. The parents had died, and now they were fighting over money. Oh man! And the guy woke up with a fucking well, woke up he didn't wake up, but he woke woke up and he had a fucking uh, knife in his heart. Uh, so, oh so for me, and this is this is this you know. And, and me and this guy share like the same kind of sense of humor. It's not like it was a serious conversation. Well, that was a serious conversation, but outside of that, we're guy always goofing around and whatnot. 
But I wanted to get back to the conversation at the table. I don't want to be rude to him. And I, you know, he, he, he was kind of like, you know, giving me my time too. I think he was aware of the time, the amount of time he was standing there. So I found out, yeah, I go, yeah, that's terrible, whatever. And, 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 and he, I didn't know how to get out of the conversation right. to get back to the table. So, so I said to him, well, at least we're still living, right? Now, Lana heard that, right? And he left after that, right? <laughs> so she goes, what the fuck did you say to him? I said, you know, we know a mutual friend that got murdered, and then I said... At least we're still living. She goes, well, why would you even say that? Why would you say that? I go, I didn't know how to get out of it. Like, that I, th- that I thought was like a definite period to like, we're done. Right? right? Like, you right. don't come yeah. back with, yeah, we are still living. Like, I, you, you, you know right. what? You're just like, yeah, you know, we're still living. And then you go in to the right. conversation. I didn't know how to. Let him go after the murder story. Uh, you, you think that uh, it was uh, harsh? Or? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it, it, I, the idea, the cadence was there. You know, that sort of a little higher pitched, clearly my last line of the play. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, but the line is a little off. You know, it should have been more like, "Hey, it makes you count your blessings, right? It's great to see you slide yeah, yeah. out." You know, yeah. at least we're still living. You just made it seem like you didn't give a shit about the whole steak knife stabbing. You know what I mean? Ah, fuck them. At least we're still living. You know? <laughs> I don't have any brothers. Knock on wood. I don't know about you. <laughs> 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 shit. Yeah. You know. Yeah. No, bro, I, come on. No. I At the end of the day, bro, you, you, you're you going to tell me. You're going to tell me. You're going to bed at night with absolutely zero thought that your brother might stab you, right? Like, don't you think, you, don't you think you're going to bed with at least a, is it 3% chance this motherfucker could come through the window and stab me, right? Or is this totally out of nowhere, right? You know what I'm saying? I think there was some tension between the brothers due to the fact they were trying to work out the will of the parents. And right. Depending, you know, this is all, you know, you got to know the individual, you got to know your brother, you know. You, right? That's what I'm saying. He, he might have went to bed going, is this guy going to stab me tonight? That's what I'm saying. You grew up with this guy. You know his makeup. You know what he's capable of. There's got to be a little bit of you that knew the stabbing might come. So I don't think you're out of line to hit the guy with the at least we're alive. Boom, you know. I think, I think Lana's overreacting a little bit to the situation. I mean, it, it would be one thing if you go. He was on vacation with his family in Hilton Head. Some psycho came out from underneath the highway and and stabbed him. You know, then you, you're hitting him with a. At least we're alive. That's crass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This was no. clearly some this white trash like domestic a... situation. <laughs> <laughs> This was a throwaway. It was a throwaway <laughs> line, bro. I'm telling you, it was. It wasn't like, you know, it was like, like you said, maybe it was the wrong choice of words, but it was like, eh, well, it's worse still living because you know, after you hear that yeah. story, the thing and the, and the sleep, this and that. At least, but, you know, I, 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 I so, think what I think what's starting to happen. Honestly, I've known you long enough, and I think subconsciously, because you, you're getting even better as as an actor, you're becoming a little more seasoned. You're about to slide into this character. I don't know much about, but I know enough to know he's a little rough around the edges. So like last week, you're wearing this Tony Soprano fucking sweatsuit. This week, you barely care about the death of somebody else. I I feel like you're already sliding into character. (laughs) I think it's time for you to get on set, shut down everything else. I mean, you know, you're practically like Joaquin Phoenix doing a podcast halfway through the Joker, you know? (laughs) How's it going, Joaquin? Oh, shit. You know, I mean, I, I feel like you're becoming this character a little bit. Am I wrong? Oh, I mean, this is, uh, he's like this a little bit, right? A little rude and fucking... He's a, actually, the character is like not your typical bookie. It's He cares. So, 
Can't get too much into can't get too much into the thing. But I appreciate you blaming my harshness and edginess as method uh, acting. It's not. <laughs> I'm yeah. trying to help you out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you think so, he went home and told his wife what you said? Like that that it was that like you believe I was telling him about our mutual friend nah. getting stabbed. Didn't, didn't, didn't even didn't even register with him. It's me. You made your wife turn around and go, what the yeah, hell did you just say? Yeah, but she's, you know, she's always looking for something that uh, that could be uh, <laughs> that could be discussed of how I could do better, you know? She's so full line of, she's like a publicist on duty twenty four hours. <laughs> just following you around. What do you say? You cool? Everyone cool? You cool? <laughs> Nah, so, things are good. <laughs> <laughs> that was worse. Than at least we're still living. <laughs> what? What you just said? Yeah, things are good. Yeah, things are good, right? I mean, you know, <laughs> I, I feel like lately you've been more personable with people. I feel like uh, you've kind of rounded that bend where people, uh, especially Lana's camp, sometimes feel like uh, you would rather be other places. I feel like I haven't haven't been hearing about that kind of action. No, no. Lately. Listen, I, I've been inserting myself into social situations, maybe not as much as Lana would like me to, but I think definitely I've been coming out of my little kitty cat shell and, and engaging Man. with people. Um, now, yesterday... I did this table read, right? And and, yeah. and 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 you're you're a lot more personable than I am and I I get like a high anxiety going into a table read and meeting actors, directors, producers, grip, prop, makeup, wardrobe. For me, I relate it to the first day of school. Now, I was never happy the first day of school because I didn't like mesh quickly with the classroom. By the time I warmed up to everybody in the school, yeah. it was summer break. Like as <laughs> soon as yeah. I got cooking, we left for summer. <laughs> so now with the, with the acting, that whole thing, you know, <sighs> I've always been in the shadows, always been like in the shadows not really engaging with people. Now, right. I'm I'm the star of the show, right? right. I got to completely do a 180 here and kind of be a leader, right? Right. So at the table read, I go around to the whole table. Everybody's around. There's like 14 actors. I go around, I introduce myself, and I shake everybody's hand. Thanks for being here. Happy you're here. Sebastian, da 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 right? Thank you, you know, thank you. Uh, so so um, so grateful for this opportunity to be working with such talented people. It's my first time doing a TV show, so I'm looking for people to you know kind of lean on through this experience. Da, 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 da. All right, that's nice. Yeah, I thought it was you know I, you got to set like some type of precedent. All right. right. Yeah. So so we're there. And uh, I do the table read, and then I go to uh, the wardrobe. We pick out some wardrobe items. Then I go to uh, the special effects. We got uh, makeup because there's something that's going to happen, and where I'm going to need some special cool. makeup. So I did a, did this whole thing yesterday. Now, as I'm telling you this story, this is how old I'm getting. As I'm telling you this story. I forgot why. why I'm telling you this story. Right? <laughs> okay? uh, oh, here it is. Here, it is. this is this is why. Uh, uh, this is why. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I got there at eight thirty. Did a COVID test. Did all this stuff. At three thirty, I left. Now I'm on the other side of the hill. Right from from where my wife and son are. They're at soccer practice, right? So I right. look at my watch. It's going to take me 45 minutes to get to soccer practice. 
and I'll get there 15 minutes before it actually starts. <clears throat> so I go. Now, my wife don't know I'm coming. I just felt like, oh, okay, I got some time. I want to go play, see him play. Right? So I go. Go to the soccer practice. Get the kids in the car. Get them some dinner. Go back to the house. Shower. Read the kids a book. In bed. And then I go to the improv for an 8.30 set. Right? And I come home around 9.15. Now, Lana gives me props. Don't get me wrong. Okay? It's not like Mm -hmm. she don't give me props. But every once in a while... After a day like that, right? <laughs> now, I don't know how this is going to come off, right? Oh. I don't know how to. <laughs> <When it... laughs> Let the guys that listen to our show put down their shovels so they can hear you tell this a little bit better. Go ahead, guys. I'll give you a chance to turn off all the machinery that you're using right now while you listen to the cast. Get your head out of the hood of the car. You've been working on the freezing cold garage. <laughs> Sebastian's want to tell us a little bit more about his makeup day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm for trying to protect you, bro. <laughs> you ever see a football game in Pennsylvania? The guy's still got coal on their face coming out of the mine trying to get down to see their son play linebacker. <laughs> they don't want to go, they don't have time to go home and shower. <laughs> Oh, you know what? You said it all, bro. I don't even need to say it. I don't even need to say it. That just summed it up right there. It's, it, it's, it, it's. I think it's great, though, that you don't just go, hey, you know, I'm busy. I I'm, I can't slide over to the, I need a break for myself. I can't make it to the practice. It is it is great and admirable that you're doing all that stuff. No, no. But I'm, I'm, uh, not, I'm, you know. I'm not looking for great and admirable. But no, I'm just saying. Every, but every, no, every cool. now and then. Every now and then. When I come home after a day like that, and granted, I ain't breaking concrete. I ain't, I ain't putting up beams. I ain't on a, on a skyscraper building it. But every now and then, it would be nice to come home. To a round of applause. <laughs> oh boy, somebody's missing the road. <laughs> <laughs> no applause oh. here, bro. No applause. <clears throat> I mean, it is. It's unbelievable. Even you know, shit. Even when I did the Paramount, I got my brick. I sold it out, and you come home, and even on that level. Uh, you know, Jackie tells you to do something, and you're like, there's no carryover whatsoever. <laughs> I couldn't imagine playing these arenas, coming home, and there's just, you know, no decompression, just slide right into whatever. All right. All right. <laughs> man, that's that is it, awesome. Man. You come home, and it's like, are you taking the kids to school tomorrow? Yeah, I guess. No. Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's uh, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> All right, just, I'll just I'll just try and remember my work on my lines <laughs> on the sideline at a soccer field because I'm sure that's what all my other actors are doing, right? You know. Meanwhile, picture in your head your other actors are with their acting coaches, you know, smoking cigarettes in a studio, working every line, and you're going, "Good job, Caruso." And Tommy, where's the money? Tommy, where's the money? Keep going. <laughs> Shit. Shit, bro. Oh, I love I tell you though, between Chuck Lorre and HBO Max and you, I mean, this thing gets green lit and we go, baby. You know, you gotta it's love gone. that. Like no bro, it, what? Yeah, it, yeah it, really? No, I know, but I mean like from, from the minute you they said it was happening, Chuck started writing, thing is locked in, actors are got film schedule starting. It's oh, just yeah. beautiful, man. It's, it's, yeah, it's, that's great. We're ready to go. That's great. Bro, I just did something here while you were talking, yeah. and it was inadvertent, but I shook my hand, and my ring yeah. is loose. How much wow. weight am I losing just in this podcast? That wasn't the case in the beginning, because I, right. I, I shook my hand. This shit, I'm losing weight as I'm talking. 
Wow. Sometimes if it's a moist day, I feel like I can whip my ring off. I can't. But, if you, but dude, you, you hit me with something that I actually wrote down I forgot to bring up. This is unbelievable. The other night, I wanted to ask you if you ever do this. It's like middle of the night, and for, and I'm not totally asleep. I at least I don't think I'm. And for no reason, and this has happened before, like my hand will just like do that. Like it'll just jerk. And I can't help thinking I'm, it's the beginning of uh, Parkinson's, you know? I'm like, was that just a cramp? Or is that, you know, something kick, like kicking in? Is well, isn't it thought? that, it's like a twitch? Like, you know, like normally when you're falling like a, asleep, you, you, you kind of. Yeah, but, but <laughs> sometimes it's like an arm twitch. And I, I just, I'm, God, I'm at that age now. Anytime anything happens, I'm like, oh, here we go. Like. Is that how it starts? Like you just like one day you shake and then the next day, you, you know, and then the next, like, I no, don't know. I don't, I'm not trying I don't. to. No, listen. That's why I need a doctor. I should have married a doctor. I could just wake her up and she'd go to Twitch, go back to bed, boom, done. I don't think it's large in, uh, involuntary movements. I don't think the, that's the way Parkinson's starts. Again, don't come to this show for medical advice. This is two dumb shits talking about. Yeah, but don't email stuff. me about what it is. I'm not going to read it anyway. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. it, folks. But yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. this is like, oh, it, it, it doesn't go from this to, you know, I, uh, I would think Parkinson starts off with small oh tremors. I, I, again, uh, again, <laughs> don't take this, don't take this to heart. But I'll tell you what's been going on with me. What? Right. <laughs> I tried getting... to walk you off a cliff. <laughs> what do you got? I've been getting little tremors throughout the body, like uh, uh, fast twitch, like muscle spasms all over the body. Right? Wow. Yeah. It could be in my calf. It could be up in my shoulder. It could be underneath my foot. Right? Just little little pulses right right yeah so that's where here's where i go is that nerves you know making that happen or is that blood that's stuck (laughs) is that is that blood trying to make it through the uh, (laughs) the veins yeah but why would so many spots get clogged at once though right it's unheard of you know, all over the body, bro. I think I think it's the opposite because I know you're doing some sort of a detox, and what that obviously does is allow your body to focus on other things. It doesn't have to digest all this food and stuff. I think you might have like blood flowing faster than it's ever flown through, and it's like it's like lifting a dam. You know, it's just <laughs> moving, right? Because by the way, with that, I wish I would have saved it. I read about and saw an article. I believe it's a micro, uh, Apple. They've created. Did you, you hear about this? Patrick could probably Google this. The quietest place room in the whole world, and they created this room with the special f- f- soundproofing everywhere. That it it's so quiet that no one can last in there more than one hour. Because when you go in, you can start to hear your blood flowing through your body you can feel you can hear your own yes that's it that's it you can feel your heartbeat when you you know how like bro sometimes you ever turn your neck and you can hear it cracking a little bit as we get older with the cartilage Mm -hmm. well you hear you hear that with every breath and movement all that kind of crunching of your body and it just like apparently (sighs) just makes people like they can't take it after a while yeah i couldn't silent i couldn't could you live laying down hearing your heartbeat and your blood you know just gurgle through a vein i don't think i'll last three minutes in there well if i hear my heart i'd i'd be blown away that it keeps going right you know i'd be like again again oh my god this thing is working like a bee it's almost like someone's leaving the car running in the driveway and you're like turn the fucking thing off (laughs) like you really I think you'd get more of an appreciation for what your heart is doing if you could hear it. You know what I'm saying? 
and it's it's been full, beaten full 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 full. Right, right? I'm smoking, and you're smoking. I'm doing this, and you're and you're adding smoke to this. <laughs> 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 oh God. Oh, um, all right, we got to wrap it up. Uh, we got to thank the listeners for uh, for tuning in here yes, again to the always. Pete Sebastian Show. We got Patreon listeners. We appreciate your patronage. Five bucks a month over on Patreon. Uh, Patreon. A lot of people are loving the uh, the pre show. What I do, what you do before the show starts. That's getting uh, that's getting a lot of uh, hits over on Patreon. It's a video that my sister spliced together. And it shows oh, me. Yeah, that was great. And it shows Pete and what we both do prior to the show. So, uh, join the Patreon page for some extras. Uh, if not, we're happy to provide some entertainment here once a week here at the Pete and Sebastian Show. Uh, for myself and Pete Corielli, we are signing off. Have a wonderful week. <laughs>